talk about today is we're going to go back to some proof, and we're going to talk about something called the unit circle. So you have the picture of it right there in front of you. Um, I'm going to talk through it. We're going to fill it in. I'm going to try and make it make as much sense as I can, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. So first of all, the reason why it's called the unit circle is because the radius has a length of 1. Okay, the radius of this circle is length 1. So, what I'm going to start with, we're going to label all these points that I have marked around this circle. Let's just start with basic um, coordinate plane understanding. This point right over here, okay, the origin is right here in the middle. This, this circle is centered on the origin. It has a radius of 1. So, this point over here is the point 1, 0. Okay, that point right there is the point 1, 0. Now, in terms of angles, we're going to, since we're dealing with curves, we're dealing with angles. In terms of angles, this is the angle of 0 degrees. <coughs> it can also be considered 360 degrees. Okay, in terms of radians, it would be 0 radians. And it could also be considered two pi radians. Those conventions still apply. We always start right here on the top of that text as we were measuring angles. So if we go all the way around, that's where the 360 or the two pi is coming from. Okay? And then if we don't go anywhere, of course it's zero. Alright, so then let's talk about this point up here at the top. On the positive y-axis, if our radius has a length of one, our x coordinate here would be zero. Our y coordinate would be one. Okay, and in terms of that angle, that forms a 90 degree angle, and in radians, that's pi over two. 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over two radians. All right, and how about this point over here on the left side? What point would that be? Negative 1, 0, because we're on the negative x-axis, and its y-coordinate is 0. Uh, now, this is pi, well, I don't know why I started doing radians first. This is 180 degrees, or it is pi radians. So it's 180 degrees, or it's pi radians. Now, a point down here at the bottom, what would that be? Zero, negative one. Okay, x coordinate is zero, y coordinate would be negative one because we're below the x axis. And this is 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2 in terms of radius. <clears throat> okay, so those are the easy, um, straightforward ones. Okay, we have a radius of one, so our extreme. Um, the top and bottom, the left and the right, <clears throat> those are 1, 0, 0, 1, however it goes there, okay? All right, now we're going to fill in these other ones. Now, where these values are going to come from is the fact that we could draw little right triangles in here, okay? I could, if I'm trying to identify this first point right here in the first row, if I drew a line directly down to the x-axis, and that would form a right angle, and I have a right triangle. <clears throat> this angle right here is 30 degrees. Okay, this angle is 30 degrees, or pi over 6. And let me, let me do this. Let me give you... Okay, so back to what I was saying. If I made a right triangle out of this, and this is a 30 degree angle right here, okay? Because the angle that I'm referring to is the angle that I'm referring to is the angle right here with the x-axis. This is the 30 degrees. I just write it out there on the line because things can get very, very jumbled up down in here. So I write it out here, but I'm referring to this angle down here at the origin. is 30 degrees. Well, if I did some trig with a hypotenuse of 1, I could find the adjacent and the opposite using sine and cosine I'm not going to go through those calculations, but I'm just going to tell you that the x-coordinate here 
is the square root of 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is 1 half. Okay, the x coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is 1 half. Now, I'm not going to fill in the other ones in the first quadrant right now. I'm going to go over to the second quadrant. Okay, I'm going to go over here to the second quadrant. Which point looks like it kind of matches with this one? Okay. Yeah. The, the one that's just above the negative one zero. Okay. It, there's a symmetry right here. It has the same y value. It's at the same uh, vertical level. And it's just a mirror image of this point over here. So this point, the x coordinate is negative. It's the exact same point. Okay. Just the x coordinate is negative. So this point over here in the second quadrant would be negative square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. <clears throat> this angle is the angle 150 degrees because we are, we're the same distance away from the horizontal axis. We're 30 degrees from the horizontal axis. So if we're 30 degrees away from 180, we're at 150. And in terms of radians, that is 5 pi over 6. That's 5 pi over 6. Yes, I have this memorized because I've been doing it since I was younger than you guys, so like over half my life. Um, so I kind of got this down pat. <clears throat> but it's all about the pattern, okay? It's all about a pattern. Let's match this down here in the third quadrant, okay? Same idea except we're reflecting it over the x-axis. So this first point down here that we get to would be negative square root 3 over 2 negative one half because in the third quadrant your x's are negative because you've gone to the left and your y's are negative because you've gone down this point we are 30 degrees past 180 so that's 210 and it is 7 pi over 6 and then let's do the one with the fourth quadrant down here Okay, its x coordinate is positive, square root 3 over 2, but we went down, so the y coordinate is negative 1 half. And we are 30 degrees short of 360 degrees, so we are at 330 degrees, or 11 pi over 6. I told you that it's going to look really, really complicated and look like you've got a bunch of stuff to memorize. <clears throat> but, in all honesty, your final exam is calculator active. So let me show you where these numbers come from and how you can use your calculator. I told you that it had to do with trig. So if I, let's see here, I'm in your mode right now. So if I do the sine of pi over 6, okay, I'm trying to find the sine of the first angle right here. And I press enter, it tells me point pi. Well, let me point pi the same thing as 1 half. Okay, um, let's check 5 pi over 6. Let's do the sine of 5 pi over 6. It also gives me 1 half. How about 7 pi over 6? Oops. It gives me negative 1 half. Now, if your calculator is not giving you 0.5, make sure you're in radian mode, okay? Because I'm putting in radians, so I have to be in radian mode. That's, this is when it matters what mode you're in, okay? Because your calculator, it doesn't, you don't have a degree symbol to put in. Well, there is one somewhere, but anyway. Um, so it's depending on the mode to tell it whether that angle is in radians or whether it's in degrees. So if you're in radian mode, it's going to read it as radians, which is which is correct. Okay. So what's happening here is that my y coordinate every single time is the sine of the angle. Okay. So the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. And the x-coordinate, let's check out what the x-coordinate is. 
I told you we were finding the adjacent and the opposite side. So which trig function has to do with the adjacent? Cosine. Okay, cosine of pi over 6. Now here's why we have the unit circle. Because when you type in the cosine of pi over 6, you get this weird looking decimal right here. Well, guess what that's equal to? The square root of 3, make sure you close your parentheses, divided by 2. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to tell you is if on the exam they ask you what's the cosine of 5 pi over 6 and you're thinking, oh crap, I don't remember the unit circle. I know it has something to do with that, but I don't remember the unit circle. Well, you have your calculator, okay? All you have to do is type in the cosine of 5 pi over 6. It's going to give you this decimal value, and then you just compare it to the answer choices. The negative square root of 3 over 2 is going to be one of your answer choices. So you type that in and you confirm that those have the exact same decimal value. Okay? So <clears throat> while it's great if you memorize this unit circle, okay, it's not necessarily necessary for you guys. Now, for people that are going on to calculus or something like that, yeah, you need to memorize it. Okay. <clears throat> but for most of the most of um, most of these uh, most of y'all you really don't. You need to know how to use your calculator. Okay? You need to use your calculator. Alright, so the points, every single time the x coordinate tells us the cosine of the angle. The y coordinate tells us the sine of the angle. Now, an easy way to remember that is to go in alphabetical order. C comes before s. Cosine is the x, sine is the y. Cosine is the x, sine is the y. <clears throat> okay, so let's go on to the middle point in each of these quadrants. Well, it's right there directly in the middle. Guess what degree measure that is? If it's right there in the middle of that quadrant. 45. Right in the middle, because the quadrant is a fourth, 90 degrees. So that's 45 degrees right there. Okay, 45 degrees in radians, that is pi over 4. This point right here is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. That's the easy one to remember because it's right there in the middle of the quadrant. You're, you go as far right as you go up. Okay, the x um, value is exactly the same as the y value. The horizontal component is the same as the vertical component. So it's square root of 2, square root of 2 every time. So we can go ahead and label this one over here. This one would be negative square root of 2 over 2, positive square root 2 over 2. Because your x coordinates are negative in the second quadrant, your y coordinates are positive. This would be 135 degrees, and it is 3 pi over 4. <coughs> Down here, both the coordinates are negative. And this would be 225 degrees and 5 pi over 4. These are what we consider our special angles. Okay, that doesn't look very much like 5 pi over 4, does it? So, now, these are not the only angles that we can find values of sine and cosine for. We know that because we've done a lot of calculations in, in our calculator with triangles and things like that. But these are the ones that are very useful in um, a lot of applications and things like that. So in the fourth quadrant, positive x, negative y, that's 315 degrees and 7 pi over 4 is that angle in the fourth part. Okay? It's just one big pattern, guys. One big pattern. Now, the last one that we're going to fill in, we're only missing one point in each quadrant, that one is going to be 60 degrees. Okay? This is 60 degrees from the axis here. So we've got 60 degrees, which is equivalent to pi over 3. 
And the neat thing about this is it reverses.